Hello YouTube, my name is Isabella and today I'm going to be doing a rather large book haul for you. Man, the past like month and a bit, I've gone crazy. I've also been trying to slow down my book buying and boy did that go out the window this month. I have about 25-ish books to haul so I'm not going to spend too much time on them. So the first two things I'm going to haul are kind of like a staple around this time of the year and the first one is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. I'm currently reading it that's why I have the dust jacket but Lord of Shadows is the second book in the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare. I'm not going to tell you what this one is about but the first one follows the events of City of Heavenly Fire about five years later and it follows the residents of the LA Institute and deals a lot with fairies. I don't want to talk too much more about it just because it is like her 10th book in her Shadowhunter world so there's going to be spoilers somewhere. The next book again is a staple and it is Aquar by Sarah J Mass. I don't love Sarah J Mass's books but pre-ordered this in both Lord of Shadows in like January when I still kind of liked Sarah J Mass books but this one obviously is the last one in the Aquar trilogy. I know that there's going to be an extended series but this is the end to the characters that we already know. And the first book is a kind of loose Beauty and the Beast ret retelling follows a girl named Feyre who accidentally kills a fae and then gets taken into the world of fae as kind of punishment and then our story takes off from there. I did not like the first Akatar book. I just, I did not understand why people liked it so much. But then when I went to read Akamath, I was really apprehensive and everyone was talking about how much they loved it, but everyone also said that they loved Akatar and it just, that one, it wasn't for me. And I read Akamath, really, really liked it, and so I'm interested to see where I fall on the spectrum of Akwar. The next book I have to haul is actually a super exciting book and it is called The Space Between the Stars by Anne Corlett. This is actually an ARC. I won it via a Goodreads giveaway and it's coming out June, June 13th. And by the time that this haul goes up, I should have already read and reviewed this book. This one is about a girl who's always wanted to go to space. She's always wanted to leave Earth Earth is super overpopulated and she just doesn't want to be there and so she travels to another planet and I think is just working there and then Earth basically like I think either gets blown up, destroyed, something like that and then she's kind of alone and then I believe she tries to find to see if she's if she's not the last human if she can find some remains of humanity and I'm really excited to read this and I've, I've never owned an arc before like I this is my first ever one so I'm very excited and intrigued to see how this goes. Quite a few weeks ago I put an order in at Book Outlet because they got a book that I've been waiting for. It's popped up on their website before but anytime I go to buy it it's just it's always sold out so and the book I got was The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audier. This is the sequel to The Wrath and the Dawn and The Wrath and the Dawn is basically a Thousand and One Night retelling. I just plan on like marathoning them both through because I think these are supposed to be pretty quick and easy reads and I'm pretty sure that The Wrath and the Dawn follows a like or ends on a huge cliffhanger so I've been waiting so long to get it and I got it and I'm just I'm very happy. Because I didn't just want to order one book on book with that order because it just wouldn't have been worth it I picked up a couple other ones. So I picked up The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. This one has been making the rounds a bit on booktube. I think there's a couple booktubers who have been reading it. I know that this is a very slower paced story that follows I believe four different perspectives and they live in Alaska and I think they all have hard lives for different reasons. I think it's supposed to be one of those heart-wrenching reads maybe? I don't, I'm not entirely sure but I'm really intrigued by this book and it's pretty short so I think I can, I hope I get to this one soon. One of the other books I grabbed was Salt of the Sea by Rudis Petties. Rudis Petties is really popular on booktube but I'm not the biggest historical fiction fan. All I know is that it's supposed to be heartbreaking historical fiction following probably not a well-known event in history. I knew what it was about years ago but I just I don't remember now. Last or thing I ordered from Book Outlet was this box set and it is the Search for Wanla or the Wanla it's upside down the Wanla series. This is a middle grade futuristic story. I don't actually remember 
entirely what these are about, but I think it just kind of reminds me of the Tre Disney Treasures Planet movie. I'm a little bit burnt out on romance and YA and stuff, so I think picking up some middle grade where they don't really have as much romance is what I need to kind of get through my slump. And I have all three in the series, so I can just pick them up and knock them out one, two, three. I popped into a thrift store one day and picked up a few kind of random-ish books, but they had a good deal on them. I got five books for a 12 buck. It was a good day. The first thing I grabbed there was A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Husseini. He also wrote The Kite Runner, which I actually hauled last time. Both these books are super popular, and I think a lot of people actually had to read them in school. But I haven't read either of them. I cannot for the life of me remember what either of them is about, but I just know that these books are very popular and they're supposed to be like really sad, so we'll see when I get to them. This one I'm going to talk about quickly. It is the Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian. I grabbed this to replace my old copy. This series was well loved by both myself and one of my brothers, and so my Percy Jacksons have been through the ringer. I picked up The Nest by Cynthia pre Sweeney. This one was super popular last year and I just I love the cover. All I remember is that it follows a bunch of like rich kids whose trust fund runs out. I think there's supposed to be like family drama. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this when I read it because it's like rich people problem. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. I also found this edition of City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I don't know where I've been, but I've never seen this edition before. Kind of, I guess, a collector's edition. I like this cover way better than the original. This was a an exciting find for me. It's in, like, perfect condition, too. And the last thing I grabbed was basically because I needed to fill my buy four, get one free. And I grabbed 112263 by Stephen King. Boy, is this book a hunker. Like, it's, it's huge. I think it's over, like, a thousand pages. But... I haven't read Stephen King before because he primarily writes horror and I'm a bit of a baby, but this one is like alternate historical fiction and it's about a guy, I think around in our time or maybe a couple years ago, but he goes back in time to stop the JFK assassination. And I figured a, a really good book to get for free was the thousand page perfect condition Stephen King book. So I picked up The Trials of Apollo by Rick Riordan. This is the second book in the Trials of Apollo series. The first one being The Hidden Oracle. The first one follows Apollo the god who gets sent to earth to live as a mortal and because he pissed off Zeus and Zeus wasn't having it. I really enjoyed the first one. It was cute and funny and I hadn't read a Rick Riordan book in a couple years, so it was fun to step back into that world. But I, I hate this cover. Do you see it? It's just, it's terrible. I hate it. And the first one is so nice. The next book I grabbed was actually Library of Souls by Ransom Riggs. And as you can see, I basically picked it up because it was 40% off and they just came out in paperback. I thought the first one was okay, and it was kind of iffy on whether I was going to read and finish off finish off the series, but told myself I'm reading Hollow City this summer. It kind of has split reviews on booktube. Some people really, really love it, but then others don't. The next two books I got in, I got in Owl Crates, and this one was April's, and it's The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. I read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda maybe in January, and I really enjoyed it. I love that there was like a fluffy, cute, gay, contemporary romance and there was nothing really more added to it. It was just it was just a nice cute story. I'm interested to see how I feel about Upside because again it seems like a fluffy cute contemporary but it actually follows a chubby girl, a fat girl. I don't know what I should call her but she's had something like 26 crushes but never really done anything about that. But I think Albertalli does like a fantastic job of writing teenagers and I'm interested to see if she pulled it off again. The other Owl Crate book I got was Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I hadn't really heard much about it before Owl Crate sent it out and I'm actually very excited for it. It follows a girl who is socially awkward and possibly anxious but she has this huge life online. She's very popular. She's a very popular comic strip graphic novel writer online and then a boy moves into town and 
he is the biggest fanfic writer for her comic series. I think it just follows awkward, cute, nerdy love. The author also said that this book was kind of a letter to fandoms. She wrote this book for people who love things, whether it's books, TV shows, movies. If you're obsessed with something in, in the fandom, that, that this book is kind of for you. And the last set of books I have to haul, I'm very excited to show you and tell you about because I bought them at the physical book outlet store. I live about an hour away, so I've never actually been able to go to the physical store. And when I went there, it was just this just huge warehouse style thing. I thought it might be small. <laughs> it's a huge warehouse. I will say though, I think their selection is better online. I think they save a lot for online because they can reach so many more people. I bought eight books from Book Outlet and they all vary in what I actually know about them. The first book I bought was The Tent by Margaret Atwood and I've, I've left the stickers on so you can see how much I paid. This one was calling to me. It's pretty short and on the back a lot of people say that she's done it again, that she's written another fantastic book. I cannot tell you at all what it's about. I just wanted an Atwood book because I've only read The Handmaid's Tale and I picked up a small one. Hard for me to justify buying these next couple books because I just love these editions of these books and it was super bad but I was at Book Outlet and I was like fuck it I wanted it. So the first one I bought The Winter's Vault by Anne Michaels and these editions are called the Vintage Vintage Anchor Emblem Canada Editions. This one follows a Canadian couple in Egypt. I think they like take their honeymoon in Egypt and that's all I know. It says, it says on the back, vivid, sensuous, compassionate, the winter vault reveals the inescapability of the past, the devastation of lust, and the restorative powers of love. So this one seems like a heartbreaking and heartwarming story at the same time and I just I love these editions. The other one I bought was Digging to America by Ann Tyler. Two families that meet by chance in an airport and then they both end up living in like the same place. It deals with, I believe, racism, cultures clash, values are challenged, and the American way is seen from com from the conflicting perspective of those who were born there and those who are struggling to fit in. So it just seems like a really relevant book even though I'm not sure when this actually takes place. The last one I picked up was Arthur and George by Julian Barnes and this one I know is historical fiction and that's all I know. I told myself though because I bought them I will have to read them maybe not exactly soon but I will have to get to them if not you don't just get to keep the pretty books on your shelves. The next book I grabbed was Ignite Me by Tara Moffey. This one was in the Scratch and Den. This is the third book in the Shatter Me series and all I need now is Unravel Me and I plan to marathon the series. People on booktube are so split about this series. Some love it and some hate it. Some think the writing style is gorgeous. Some think that it's unnecessarily flowery. The next book I grabbed was Liesl and Poe by Lauren Oliver. This is a middle grade story. Richard from Richard's Book Nook. Just, it's one of his favorite books ever. He talks about how beautifully done it is. And I don't often read much middle grade, but the amount of, like, but the way that he talks about it made me want to pick this one up. Okay, so the next book I picked up I was really excited to get to and now I don't know and it is The Liar Thief by Jennifer Fallon. I think this author has other works in the series already and so if I go reading this one because it is a new, it is a new series, but I think if I read this one I'll be spoiled for the previous series and I just, and I tried looking it up online but there were no like concrete things so if anyone knows if I have to read her other like Hithran, Hithran Chronicles, whatever they're called, before I read this one, please let me know. The next book I grabbed was Best in the Night by Sarah Porter, and I believe that this is a retelling of a Russian folktale. It takes place, I think, in modern day New York, but I think it's just like kind of like an alternate New York and I all I remember from the reviews is that people said it's like very strange super odd I'm interested to read this though because it seems like a fantastical type maybe magical realism esque standalone book the next book I grabbed was one I was by far the most excited that I that I picked up and it is 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg I have her other graphic novel book over there 
which is the Encyclopedia of Early Earth, and I haven't picked it up yet, but I've I've been meaning to. These books are just so beautiful. They're also very expensive, so I'm glad that I found it at Book Outlet, even though you might be seeing 17 bucks and think it's a lot, but I think these retail for like 40 bucks or something. So now that I have both of them, I'm very excited to read them. They're very well acclaimed and I think they've both won a bunch of awards. I have two more books to show you very quickly. Went into this outlet mall and they had this um little stand, two little stands of used books. Of course I was gonna stare and watch, look at them for about a half an hour instead of doing like the actual shopping I was supposed to be doing. The first one I grabbed is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte and I read this when I was in the ninth grade and hated it. I thought it was garbage but it also was the first classic book I ever read and it was one that I had to read on my own. It wasn't one where you like studied it in class but it was one you had to read and interpret on your own and it just <laughs> it was it, it was too hard for me at that time and I when I found this I got so excited even though I didn't really love Withering Heights. I do want to give this one a chance though. I have warmed up to unlikable characters. I I love unlikable characters now and that's basically the definition of Heathcliff, Heathcliff and Kathy. And the final book in this haul, man did filming this take so long, but it is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cis Cis Cisneros. And this one has, I've seen a couple people talk about it and it's very like classic Latina, Latino fiction. Told in a series of vignettes, like very short kind of glimpses into to one's life and it's basically about a girl who doesn't want to be a part of her poor neighborhood or like the expectations that society wants on her. She wants to be more than that. It's supposed to be very beautiful and it's super short and I also read a couple of pages while in the car on the way home and I really really liked the style that it was told in. I did put myself on a book buying ban and what do I do? I bought the, the upwards of 25 books. I would like to know if you've read in any of these books, what you think of them, and especially if you know anything about The Liar Thief by Jennifer Fallon, please let me know. I've tried looking up online, but I cannot find anything about it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time. Bye!